Hey everybody. Okay, we're on Monopolis part five, and this is kind of an interesting video. We're gonna do something kind of strange, but stick with it. If you understand this, man, you're doing great, okay? We're gonna do a welfare analysis. We're going to compare Monopolis to perfect competition. So I'm gonna use this graph both to think of perfect competition and the Monopolist. This graph is the market, okay? This is the market. If it was perfect competition, of course it would not be a single firm, but it would still be the market. But when we think of from a monopolist standpoint, the market is the firm. I know that's a little bit confusing, but just kind of stick with me as I develop this, okay? So I've got my supply market, demand market. I want to first think of this as just perfect competition. Perfect competition, supply market, demand market, they intersect right there. Supply and demand sets the price. So I'm going to draw this right over and I'm going to say price perfect competition so price pc so that's what we would look like okay and i guess i could draw that down and we could say that's the quantity perfect competition that's how we would look if we had perfect competition going on however if we had a monopolist we would have this mr curve to consider okay and for the monopolist how much are we going to produce we're going to produce until mr equals mc right there, that intersection point. So we grab that, bring it down. There's my Q monopolist. And I'm gonna go all the way up to the demand curve because price is based on the demand curve. And I'm gonna bring that over, price monopolist. Now I've got everything I need to do the welfare analysis. So A, B, C, D, E, you know, of course, just making up letters, but you know, following the alphabet F, G, H, okay? There's the letters that we need. Hopefully that's coming through clear on the video. So perfect competition, consumer surplus. So going back, I'm seeing this graph as perfect competition, not as a monopolist, so I'm ignoring the M marker. If this was perfect competition, I just have to focus on that supply, that demand, and that price point right there. The consumer surplus would be plus A, plus B, plus C, plus D, plus E, okay? This would be the price consumer all the way to the demand curve. There's the demand curve. The amount of demand curve lies above price consumer, consumer surplus, producer surplus, price producer, supply curve. It would be plus F, plus G, plus H. Just here, I'm just gonna write the sigma sign, point up. That's if we had perfect competition. This would be the result that we would get. Now let's go to Monopoly, okay? Monopoly, we're only gonna produce this level of output, okay? That's the key. We're not gonna produce past this, and this is the price point, okay? So what's consumer surplus? Monopolists have pricing power. They're gonna price based on the demand curve. Consumer surplus, get what, guess what? It's gonna shrink. Consumer's not gonna get A, B, C, D, E anymore. Here's our price, there's our demand curve, only plus A plus B, plus A, plus B. How about the producer? What's their surplus looking like? Well, we've got, well, start with the price. Price right to here, okay? Now, that's not the supply curve, but we're not producing past this amount, okay? So price right to there. We know we're not producing past this quantity. So I'm gonna take that down to the supply curve, follow it just like that. So we're only producing from here to here. Here's the marginal cost curve. There's the price point, the per unit revenue. This is our area only up to right there. Don't go past that dashed line because nothing's being produced past that. So what does that mean? It means plus C, plus D, plus F, plus G, okay? Plus C, D, F, G. If that doesn't make sense right at this moment, I just hit pause, look at that graph, Go through it till it makes sense to you. Maybe even rewind just a second to catch what I'm saying to make sure that totally makes sense to you. And now we're ready. We've done all the hard work. We just put our sigma point up. We've got our monopolist. We've got our perfect competition. So what happens when we go from perfect competition to a monopolist? When, that, when we do that, we, the consumer definitely worse off. Losing C, D, and E, okay, losing C, D, and E. The producer, a bit of a bit mixed bag, but overall, I think they're probably gonna do better. They like market power for sure, right? So, C, D, F, G, okay, so what happened in this situation? We did lose H, okay, so that H right there 
was lost when we went from perfect competition to a monopolist. However, what was gained? Both C and D. So let's sum this up, okay? What are we going to get? What's our conclusion? Well, positive C, negative C. Positive D, negative D. So what are we left with? Negative H, negative E. Let's go take a look at that. Hmm, it's this area right there. And guess what? That's our dead weight loss that we get if we have the monopolist produce this, okay? That's our dead weight loss. We should kind of understand that because this curve right here, hey, whoa, we'll let that one go. This curve right here, that's our marginal social cost curve. This curve right here, this is our marginal social benefit curve. They intersect right here. We're only going to produce to this. What's the problem? All of these goods right here, the marginal social benefit to society was greater than the marginal social cost to society. We wanted to produce all of those goods where the MSB was greater than the MSC, but we didn't. Okay, the monopolist didn't. So, monopolist is a form of market failure because we fail to achieve maximum social surplus when we have monopoly power. But I want to put in a word of caution. It doesn't mean every time that we have a market failure, for sure the government should intervene, okay? If the market power is really small, hey, maybe don't intervene because there's cost to intervening, okay? There's all kinds of um, secondary and tertiary effects that happen when we intervene. So if the market power is small and we're just getting a little bit less than max social surplus, but we also are keeping all the incentives for firms to try to achieve abnormal profits, economic profits, maybe not intervene. But if market power gets substantial enough and that deadweight loss gets big enough, yes, there might be an opportunity for government to come in and make things a little bit better, or maybe a lot better, if the monopoly power is very strong. So, market power, monopoly power, it gives us some level of deadweight loss, and it is a form of market failure. The perfect competition would have given us more social surplus. Anyhow, hope that that made sense for you. We'll see you in the next video.